Okay, anyone who wants to see a monopole on a 1986 Hutchison sample, they can come here. Uh, if they want to see the Vega Valley. So in my presentation, in a number of presentations, I have showed this structure. This is the yin and yang structure here. So it's exactly the same form, except this is the yang. It's destroying the matter. It's putting it through a wormhole. Of, uh, it's a um, phallico soliton, half soliton, and it's smashing down on, on this part of the structure. And I can zoom into the bottom of the cavity there, and then I can move around here, and you can actually see into the bottom of that cavity there. That's wild. Right? The overall structure here is the same as a, ty a typical uh, flux loop that produces large-scale uh, uh, toroidal plasma ejections from the sun. So the overall structure here is exactly the same. And it was going to be my other presentation here at um, the conference, it, but I chose the one I did about the Mexican uh, marks. Um, but uh, the picked people have a symbol, the symbol called the light lightning uh, structures, and they are in my view, the same structure that's depicted on this, which is also depicted on a European Space Agency uh, satellite image. Now, there are individual ball lightning impacts here. I call this ball burn, it's from 1986. It's a steel sample. But if we go down to here, and I've seen this on other uh, e experiments, here, this is the monopole here, okay? So if I can uh, zoom this in, Okay. Is that the A1, Bob, camera? Yeah, it's the A1 with a Laura five times optical. So <clears throat> because this flails around like a tornado, you get a fat bottom. It's like a mushroom. This is where the phase singularity is, and that's where the matter is destroyed. It's not only destroyed, it's reborn in this case. And when I switch to the ring light, you'll see that it is a sphere in there. And when you look at it under the SEM uh, images that I shared a long time ago, that is silicon dioxide. And silicon dioxide is 74% of the Earth's crust. Okay? Now that is essentially, the, 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 this goes down to the bottom of the Visica Pisces in Thor's hammer. Um, and so it's kind of something like that, and that is, you've got the vortex there and the anti-vortex, and in the center of the Christ center, that's where you get the monopole, okay? Um, the, the, the phase singularity. So if I switch this off and I switch to my ring light here, it'll look like it's gone in a nuclear bomb, but we'll turn that off and we'll change the exposure here. Uh, I can pull that back down. Oh, no, yeah, yeah. is it going to? Uh, am I doing it right, that one? Uh, there we go. Oh, it's, com it's adjusting as I'm adjusting it. It's fighting me. Stop it! I've got it. I'm just so bright. Anyway, my, what I wanted to show you here is you can see the spherical part and the, um, the optical distortion caused by the refraction in that glass sphere that's been synthesized there. So in this case, the, so I'm looking at the bottom there of the thing. I'm going through the depths here. And for people that know how to use tools, when they take this video, you can use a simple program to, to take screen grabs, and then you can use Photoshop to create a, a, a stack focus from it. So uh, you'll be able to create a full depth image of this. I could do tutorials on how to do that, but anyway, that, that is that monopole. Now I'm gonna show you this. This is the Vega Valley sample. This is a sheet of brass. And it, was a it came out of an attempt to replicate uh, the, uh, um, uh, oh God, uh, too tired. No, no, it was, it was the, mm -mm, the Electric Sun model and they had, what's it called? Uh, uh, the Electric Sun model, the people, I mean, it was actually Hal Putov was involved and so was, um, anyway. They weren't interested in helping Hank Urin, so he reached out to us and eventually he sent me, he showed me a picture of this sample and I immediately recognized this here as, if I turn the light on here, as a magnetic fluid structure. So a, an electric uh, fluid structure would, would look more like a Lichtenstein figure. A magnetic fluid arranges this kind of uh, wormwood structure. Yeah, it looks like yeah. Worms okay, worms. so worm, yeah. So essentially what you have is you had a brass plate and a brass plate 
uh, a bias, DC bias of, of 100 volts or 200 volts or whatever, and then pulses of up to 750 volts in a low pressure air environment in a standard sort of butane tank uh, with a little bit of hydrogen added. And this ran for about 100 hours. And the reason this came about was serendipity. The tank he had only had a small port. So he wanted to create a large electrode like they had in the Sapphire project, that's what I was trying to remember, like that big electrode with the anode, big in the cathode, but he, the whole chamber was a cathode. But he, he inserted in two bits of angle iron to bridge across the uh, cylindrical section of the chamber. He then put brass plates that way and then brass plates on top. This is part of a brass plate going that way and then there's brass plates on top. So effectively there was just a gap in between which had loads of different distances so you had a chance of iron acoustic waves in there. Because it's brass it can produce zinc oxide which is piezoelectric and, 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 and pyroelectric. Copper oxide is photoelectric as I've said yesterday. It's almost the perfect material for getting everything you can possibly do to, to make uh, ball lightning. Anyway, on the videos which I've shared, there are ball lightnings forming in the crack. And he ran this for about 100 hours and then just turned it off and started taking the things out. And when he lifted the two plates that were on top, there's a mirror of that from one side, there's a mirror of that from the other side, and then that was underneath. No one, to the best of my knowledge, had stacked electrodes with a gap in between them in any experiment ever in the history of experiments, right? And what was occurring so Ken Shoulder says you can fluidize the electrons with EVOs because one cluster, whilst they have this non-radiating boundary, if you form them close to each other, they wet into each other and they form a common non-radiating non non boundary. But you end up by fluidizing the electrons. And the fluid, fluidized electrons are then f pouring out in between the crack of the brass and they're making these one millimeter channels. And these are the perfect homes. Now, when I show you this under the microscope here, or macro, macro photography here, uh, you will see the tracks of ball lightnings, and you will see the channels. And in the channels, <laughs> so what you have here, it forms a Maxwell's uh, 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 superfluid structure. So if you go back to, I think it's 1864, uh, in 1864, it's a hexagonal structure, and you have vortices going one way and vortices going the other way, and that's a, like in a grid array. And what you have here is a yin-yang pair, a yin-yang pair, a yin-yang pair, a yin-yang pair along the walls. And in fact, when you pan through this structure here, uh, you, you have it all the, all the way down. Now, in the central channel, it's synthesized carbon. I'll go to the central channel somewhere over here, and you'll see it's really dark. It just absorbs lightly, yet like you wouldn't believe. I can All actually these find. Are, are these, these are elements getting created? Or They're so, oxides uh, of copper channel. and so on. So in this central channel, when you look at this under microscope, it, you, there's not a microscope I found powerful enough that can uh, determine what this is in terms of it's, it's basically dendritic carbon that's synthesized. And those little spike, the, the little bright reflections, there are diamonds that are on the peak of the vortices, that form in the peak of the vortices. Okay? So yeah, you yeah, see. You see diamonds in uh, these meteorite things like the, the Younger Dryas, whatever, yeah. like that, that impact site in Germany where there's a town there and a lot of the buildings are built out of rock that has millions of little nano diamonds in there. Well, because this is, in my view, the same process, it's not surprising form diamonds, but you're not necessarily forming the diamonds by smacking it. You're actually forming it inside these clusters. Okay, so I'm going to go to the boundary over here in a minute, if I can find the right one. Um, Okay, so this is rather a nice little caldera. So it's come out and it's reconnected in a, in a fluid channel here uh, of the fluidized electrons. Okay, and this to me is probably the most important sample on Earth right now. <laughs> and uh, thank you to Hank Kieran for uh, letting me have a look at it and, and, and uh, you know, share whatever it has there. Now, if I, if I turn off this light and we'll switch over to the other one because we're going to be able to see the depth of field and it's really rather special when you do that. Uh, I need to change the exposure here. Get the right way. Oh, hold on. What happened there? That's alien. No, I went. Yeah, it's wild, isn't it? Okay. <laughs> right. What magnification is that? Uh, th this setup can see down to 0.85 of a micron optically with full color. And because it has oversampling on the pixels, you get the exact color per pixel, right? So if I move this around, you can actually the see the landscape. Oh, wow. Is it 0.5? Oh, wow. yeah. 
You can see 0.85 of a micron. Yeah. Uh, no, but I am recording it right now, and then it can be played afterwards, right? Yes, so essentially what you're seeing around here are yin-yang pairs, yin-yang pairs, yin-yang pairs, yin-yang pairs, and you get twisted. If I go over here, there's a rather nice bit over here that I rather like. Uh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But actually, this is the first time I'm recording in 8K. So you can see the pairs here. Now, over here, I'm going to show you this structures over here. You can see where the ball lightnings are formed in the central channel here. Uh, the central channel, uh, this dark line here. And then they've bled out and they've left these classic uh, channels that, that Ken Shoulders saw. And as they've traveled across the surface, um, so I'm going to, uh, what am I going to do? I'll kill that light, it's over, overdoing it really. Come on, turn off. Okay, and then I'm going to change this one. I don't know, to put that one. Mm. Should have a switch for that, shouldn't I? Yeah. Oh, okay. It's like a ring light on the. Okay. So the, the images of iron rich crenellated spheres. Oh, you should. Oh, wow. Oh, that's beautiful. That's that is really beautiful. Crinoid fossil, silicated fossil imprint. Right? Mm hmm. So they have that same Holy real crap. shape yes. in their vertebrae. Yeah, so in that Rodionov paper with Savatomov that I talked about on dark matter threads, it's called, okay. they, they say that fossilization is because there are these persistent dark matter structures that exist in the body. And when the calcification or the mineralization of an organic structure happens, you literally have it working on the template of the actual dark matter that's left from the living organism. So it's organizing. So the fossil is caused by, by calcification and other min sil silicate, right. all the memorizations right. of the echo in the ether right. that's left by the dead living organism. Right. It's the exotic vacuum objects we're all made of left and, and that matter is connected around. Um, so there's a whole Fossilization different- Fossilization would not occur without that? <laughs> is uh, that what you're saying? Uh, uh, well, I, don't, I, I think it's one and the same. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so what you're seeing here is, is ball lightning tracks and they come from the central channel and it's literally, you can imagine this is like the Younger Dryas flood and the big event that happened up here and these things are coming across the landscape and what I've showed you with the, with the blown up ball lightning, with the silicon dioxide on the outside and the ca uh, calcium oxide on the outside, that with the iron rich crenellated sphere in the middle and the caduceus coming up and the subtors with the, uh, forming the smaller iron structures, they are all over here at the end of where these ball lightning came. They came down here, they de-energized, they, they, they'd lived their life and they just blew up and deposited. So that's what I was showing you on the SEMs. Uh, in my presentation. And you're saying if we got closer, like if we could get right up close, yeah, yeah, yeah. That right yeah, up Yeah, but up. like uh, this is about as close as you can get yeah, optically. What are those deposits? Okay. Hmm? What are those, deposits? those are, so what happened is, and this is why this sample is so amazing, um, zinc has a very low melting point and even a low boiling point. So in the center, you do get the zinc boiling and it spreads out as a gas in between and it covers the brass with this beautiful zinc oxide layer. And then as the ball lightning comes down, it eats through that, boil, uh, that, that zinc oxide layer and leaves these wonderful trails that eat into the, the uh, brass substrate. And you can see the me meandering uh, formations they have and sometimes they jump so th there will be a ball lightning structure here and a ball lightning structure here in that center one there we see where that little black spot is if i went into that i could i could i, I would be willing to place a reasonable bet to say there's an iron rich crenellated sphere in the middle there okay so when, when you when you understand the behavior of these things it becomes i mean it, it's a little bit boring for me now um <laughs> but, so now the thing is yeah <laughs> it honestly it is um so look, you can see an overall tongue shape there. And, and in fact, I'll show you here. There's actually a, and, and I really mean this, this is the lower part of the ank. So you've got one wing there, the center there, and the other wing there, and the lower part of the ank, okay? And whatever it was up there. So I'm gonna focus on that little area. It's, it's a little bit too far out um, to see it. Um, where are we gonna go down? 
Here, here. So there, there we go. So you've got one side of the arm of the ank, the center of the ank, and the side over there. And then you've got the tongue of the ank reaching down. And according to the Egypt Egyptians, the secret to all hidden technology is the bit under the loop under the ank, it, it, of the ank. And that there is the, the core of the monopole, right? So like in this case, we're, we're looking at something about like this kind of perspective here, <laughs> like there. Um, <clears throat> Mm? That is where the monopole comes. So yeah, it's pulling in matter with this tongue, okay, into that core there. Or it's destroying matter there and throwing it out. Probably that one that in that case. The, this would be the Yang. The emission jets of, um, of a pulsar or something. Quite possibly, yes. Yeah. So um, I want to go and show you this structure here. Because this is the end of a floodplain for uh, a fluidized electrons. Now when you look at this under the SEM, all you see is copper oxide. All of this looks like copper oxide, okay? But what can you see there as well? Here, uh, this area here. Yes, it's different polarizations. And what you have there is hexagon structures in rings and then an overall cap, okay? And what it's done is it's changed the spin or some magnetic aspect of that so that when you hit it with normal light, it's spinning the light one way, making green, and it's spinning light the other way, making red. And that is the echo that is left in the material of the ball lightning organized, self-organized hexagonal array that has gone on that point. Now, that scale there one substructure of that and the pair with the red and the green is the same scale as you see on the wall here of the structure which we looked at earlier here with these yin-yang pairs. Okay, here. So th these, these things on the wall side. So you, I, I can look at this all week. <laughs> this it isn't really boring. But looking for mine rich credit spheres is boring, but uh, looking how difficult was it to make the sample? I, I missed that. It's pure serendipity. Really? Yeah. Is it re replicatable? I, I imagine so, but like you've got to have someone who has the courage uh, of someone like uh, uh, Hank Urine. You can make your own ball lightning at home on the kitchen table. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I mean, you can. So if it's, ha yeah. if it's happy coincidence that happens all the time. Generators at home, right? All the time. That's, that's right, right? If you replicated this, so he had a, a double-sided Cockcroft Walton made out of a bunch of capacitors he got second hand and some big diodes. Uh, he put it in a cardboard box under a bench in his barn. Uh, he then had a fan to keep uh, four microwave transformers cool uh, and he killed one tr transformer. In, uh, that's why he had a limit of 750 volts. You're it. Hmm? See you later, mate. Bye, bye. <laughs> Safe travels. Um, and so you had um, uh, up, to, up to 750 volts for the pulses and it's as much as a roughing pump could make the low pressure air. Ball lightning forms in nitrogen rich air with oxygen in the air, doesn't it? So like it, you should be able to make ball lightning in a chamber, but of course creating any kind of ionization gets easier when you have a lower pressure, right? So, and then the whole chamber is a negative electrode. So rather than the sapphire had just one disc at the end, he couldn't afford some fancy copper and whatever, so he just got an old, you know, uh, and I, I said that the previous uh, reactor he was using, that this was actually made in, was stainless steel. And I said, you need to change it for iron. So a, a lot of the Vega experiments since then have been iron to prevent um, a charged uh, a strange radiation from being able to go through the iron. So it gives you a good sense of protection. So, um, or at least a little bit more confidence, you're not being bombarded by these things. You, the normal radiation detectors like this and, and, and this alpha, beta, gamma pancake device can't see. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, um, so yeah, this, this for me is probably the most important sample I've ever been able to handle um, because it shows the whole thing and, and you know, the, what you see in a spectrum of ball lightning recorded and published in a peer-reviewed journal earlier in the last in early in the last decade um, the ball lightning breakup products here are exactly and precisely that and although calcium oxide and silicon oxide and iron oxide are the bulk of the material all of the rest of the elements between are all of the elements in your body i consider this to ball lightning to be the flower of life literally 
And when I, you see that Temple of Osiris, uh, Abaddon or whatever it is, to, what, uh, that place that I showed you with it, mm. the so-called laser things on the wall, and then the 3D version under the Temple Fudog in, in uh, the central palace, in the Forbidden Palace in Beijing, that's the spher spherical thing. It is the flower of life. It is the flower of life. This is the flower of life. This is what you use to transmute anything to anything. It is the God's toolbox. So and all of the magic comes out. Iron of it. plate is the best protection from the strange radiation? Good iron plate is. No, sorry. That, that kills ones that are non neutral. Okay. okay. And because his chamber is all negatively charged, that also will uh, excite neutral ones into a charged state so that they also uh, effectively stopped. And that is one way you can do it. If you've got a, a cavitation device, which you can kill yourself very quickly, by the way, um, without knowing it, you'll just get cancer later and you're like, oh, isn't it sad? Um, yeah, so you, you need sheets of aluminium uh, and, and I, I use aluminium cellophane, aluminium cellophane. So the Ark of the Covenant was layers of conductors and, and I think a case here or something that was like, and, and that will, in my view, if it was stored charge clusters, that would help the emissions because they would, they would constantly pull the energy in from the ether, which is a neutral that goes in, but when it gets overcharged, it will emit these two kilo electron volt photons. And, it, and if they, the structures break, they spit out coherent matter waves. And if they're neutral or, or you, you don't want them to travel through, you want them to hit the incredible conductive gold layer be converted into the charge state and then dissipate like you saw the ball lightnings traveling along there, along the surface. So I'll take you over here to the Matsumoto, sorry, sorry to the um, Binge Wen Huang sample, because uh, this completely solved the fact that the radiation protection will work. Okay, so this is a yin, this is a yang. The yang has a yin and a yang, and the, the, the yin has a yang and a yin, okay? This is an apple shape. You can see the vortex one way, and you can see the other way. This is produced in a cavitation reactor. These are the scales typical uh, of, of one of the quantizations observed by uh, Ken Shoulders. Here, Ken Shoulders would split um, exotic vacuum objects and they would go in one or two directions but they seem to be bound by something okay and then they would snap back together when they got through their yeah. obstruction right now what you're seeing here are the filaments of matter wave but in the cl collapsed matter wave ordinary matter state so when this was active in my view these were like little wormholes with matter in a coherent matter wave state linking these two together, right? And they're able to travel through ordinary matter without any restriction, okay? But when the overall toroidal structure collapses, then this is stellar synthesis matter that you see in these filaments that are bound into and coming out of the substructures in between. Yeah. So, um, uh, now, as I said in my presentation, in the, I think it's the 2014 peer-reviewed paper, um, they said that the toroidal or fractal toroidal moment, they don't call it that, they call it mm, super toroidals in the West, hyper toroidals in the Soviet sphere. Um, they, if you have a polarization one way, then um, uh, you, you get the vortex structure like this with the magnetic structure like that. If you have the polarized, electrical polarization the other way, you get it like that. Now it's a certain number of megavolts per meter that does the flip. And if you look at the scales here, this. I'm trying to remember it offhand. I think it's about 7.2 volts. Now, how much do you need to split water? Two volts. A well, little bit over, but yeah, yeah, a yeah, little bit over. So this could be splitting water as it goes, producing atomic hydrogen, which it feeds on. And you see, it needs to be this scale and this level of substructure of vorticity to affect the process of accessing electrons and protons to continue doing its synthesis. And over here, if, if someone could grab Matsumoto's book on the, on the table up there, if it's still there. Yeah, I've got one. Have you? Okay, fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So in, I'm trying to understand this kind of in reference to that flower of life you mentioned over there. Yeah. Is that the filaments that you're seeing, is that the representation of that six-petaled flower? Uh, the, 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 these filaments are co coherent matter, co coherent matter wa waves w that which were connecting these two structures. Mm -hmm that have now collapsed, in my view, right. right? And the collapsed wave has a spread spectrum of elements typical 
to stellar synthesis. So there's, there's magnesium, calcium, pre predominantly carbon. Right. Uh, so if you look at the Kordeleski clouds, and if you look at the word of Vikram, or what the, the guy that was presenting yesterday, he says most of interstellar dust is carbon. Why? Because of these things. Right. Most of what they produce is carbon, right? The big right? And there's reasons why. It's, it's, it's three alpha particles, and the alpha particles, when they come out, they are diamagnetic, so they don't like to go back into this magnetic structure, right? So once they're made and they're out there, they're a little bit hard to deal with. Right. This is the flower of life in all literal senses, in my view. Right, so, so what I see here is that same X pattern with polar form, right? That we get in the six-petal well, flower, six flower. No, no, this is, this is just two central apples that have kindly broke up. These apples are in a much better condition. But inside this, there's two structures, and this is a one overall structure, right? Inside here, there's another two that are orthogonal. And those have two which are orthogonal in them. That's a wheel within a wheel within a wheel. Literally, that is what we're talking about. The wheel within a wheel within a wheel, okay? And what, you, what we're going to see over here is one of those wheels. And if you look at the scale, that would be a, one of t a pair of wheels. Now, the reason it's not apple shape and it's more like a volivon or a fat Oreo, right? is because this is the part of the sacred geometry, not on the outside flow pattern where you create the Vesica Pisces, it's the half radius in where they come and join in the middle. Okay, and because they come in the middle, they get flat sides. It still expands out when the overall structure, this has come out of there, it, it kind of uh, comes out and it fattens out as it starts, you know, the, the whole thing, the confinement is breaking up. But inside here is a point of electronuclear collapse. So this is a sub tor of one of these structures, and that is one tor which is going around there and through that structure in there. And these are subtors. So there's a wheel electrodynamically here. This is a subtor of that. And this is a subtor of one of them. This is the wheel within the wheel within the wheel. Okay. And in this, so at one point the, there, there is a beam that comes down here, which has got torsion. And I believe it affects the, the structure of the physical vacuum, but it literally pulls the chi out of matter, which comes into here. And then it flows into the structure to affect the other nuclear changes. In here, I believe what's happened in this case, and, and, and there are more samples to serious scientific organizations that will accept a material transfer document where they say, these are the tests that I will do, this is the time frame I will do them in, with a penalty if you do not do them within those time frames. It has to be published open. It has to be recorded sessions like I do, so there's no funny business going on, right? And it has to be put out in the open sphere. So that is the requirements from Bin Zhuen Huang, but there's quite a lot of material for anyone to verify these findings as they see fit. Now, in here, on page 91 of Matsumoto's book, having studied cold fusion and realizing it was ball lightning that did the pro process, his conclusion was, on, and which you can see on page 91, that some toroidal structure causes a situation in an electrodynamic sense where you get a point of electronuclear collapse. It goes into a wormhole, and out of that you get typical elements on the outside, hydrogen, carbon, and oxygen, and on the inside you get heavier elements like titanium and iron. Titanium is the fusion of CO2. We saw titanium on the inside of the outside of uh, Malcolm Bendel's 500 hour reactor, okay? In, in, in a little piece. Uh, we also saw iron, but you don't know whether it's coming from the reactor. So what's happened here is the point of electronuclear collapse, the confinement has failed, and the matter has just gone off in the direction, the first direction it started going off in, in a wormhole. And, and then, then the matter, so you take the earth, and you put it into a black hole, it's 12 millimeters across, right? So in there, it's a very small thing. It's not a singularity, but it is very small, right? And it, it, it's all coherent matter, and it comes out here, and then it goes and makes that beautiful crystal flower. Over here is probably the most important image of all of these, because this is, I've got this in 8K by 8K, physical, the actual resolution from the SEM. And what happened here is, is, if you look at the scale here, 30 microns, 10 microns, 5 microns, 5 microns is one of the quantization sizes of the wheel within a wheel within a wheel that, that Ken Scholes talks about. And what's happened is this structure has come in here and it started to consume matter. And what happens when it consumes too much, you can imagine it gets too energetic and it gets unstable. And it's left a Celtic braid. They are the two structures that are orbiting like that. 
and it's spitting out the material that it's captured and it's depositing this. But one of the substructures within this substructure, which is already a wheel within a wheel within a wheel within a wheel of one of those structures, has lost its substructure at this point. You can see it there and it spat out a helical beam as it's died. That is the most important image I think I've ever been able to capture. That is what you don't want going in your body. A neutral structure that is able to carry a large amount of matter in a state which it doesn't have any charge representation. So the only thing that's stopping you falling through this floor, or if you're sitting on a chair falling through the chair and the chair not falling through the floor, is because all of the electrons are the same. They're resonant. So they, they repel each other. But if you have a minus one charge, like a muon or a tau on, they're not quite the same, are they? Now, Ken Shoulders says you can have billions or trillions of electrons in the same single minus charge structure, okay? But it's not resonant with ordinary electrons. It's on a different literal dimension. It's in our dimension, but it's a different dimension. It's a different resonance. It's like 2.45 gigahertz microwave Wi-Fi can go through walls, but five gigahertz is harder and the higher free because it starts to become resonant with the materials it's traveling through. But this is not resonant at all. But the weird thing is, is that coherent matter that's ca captured in a point that is so small it's never going to interact with any ordinary matter. It's a honey, I shrunk my kids thing, right? That can travel through other things, and when the confinement, matter, uh, confinement of the stru structure collapses, the matter is reborn in the electronuclear regeneration, and that is teleportation of matter. Now the question is, can we create these structures, as I've had in my presentation, where you don't crush the matter, but you still create a bubble of space-time where light comes here and it appears over here. It's totally cloaking the in thing inside, and it can't interact with ordinary matter, and it can travel through ordinary matter, and it is not affected because the thing that causes the action of gravity, giving weight to mass, is not able to impinge on the matter that's in this electrodynamic structure, in this flower of life mesh structure. So it can literally travel without inertia, and because of the structure over there that is able to change the dielectric constant, the physical vacuum, epsilon zero, speed of light changes and time changes, and you can punch through and you're not restricted uh, with the, the, the laws of relativity to going far, slower than the speed of light. So it, 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 as um, Hal Puthoff says, there's one simple structure that can do all of these things. And then he has a patent talking about toroidal structures that uh, combine in interesting ways to create a boundary in which there is no electric or magnetic force outside, but uh, scalar and vector potentials. And that, my friends, <laughs> is it. It's done, and it just needs the right money and the right place and the right people to deliver. And the question is, do you want to be the generation that makes that happen? <laughs> It is the new dawn of an old age. Does this correspond in scale to like, the death of a star and the, the processes that we would see? The From my opinion, the way all matter is both in a cycle between alpha and omega repeatedly is because the divine creator understands and works with whirlwinds. The Templar Magic Square, adopted by the Christian Church all over Europe, from Syria all the way to the Celtic Islands, and then brought to America and spread all the way down. It was a charm to help people in health, to defend against lightning, <laughs> all kinds of things. Hidden in plain sight. Hidden. We have literally had the fleur-de-lis with a torus around it, with matter going in, ca coming out. Yeah. The Maltese cross, which is the swastika and the matter from four substructures, which all have also their fractal substructures. You have the yin-yang, which is obviously part of the structure. <laughs> you, you have the uh, om symbol, which is obviously part of the structure. You have the paisley. The paisley is what happens on one side. The first symbol of the first monotheistic uh, religion, right? Every single of power in heraldry and in religion, the Vrajra is the center between here, that's the little bit you get in the middle of the Vrajra, and the two fingers coming out are there in the eye. You can see that in the Masonic Lodge in Brighton on the front door area. They literally draw the Vrajra and all of the proportions are exactly the sacred geometry I showed you. Exactly the same for the 1733 
uh, Masonic Lodge, Grand uh, uh, um, Temple, the Inner Sanctum, just down the Coke Road in New Jerusalem, in Washington, D.C., right? It's exactly and it's precisely represented. It's been hidden in plain sight all of our lives and for most of recorded civilization since the last cataclysm, when before, I believe, it was used by a, a, a society, a global society, that completely understood how to work with nature and that this is the way to work with nature. And by the way, everything you're filming with here is not compatible with this technology because it interferes with the PN junction. PN junction, a transistor. We have two mutually exclusive technologies. One allows you to melt rock, levitate things, travel faster than light, travel through space time, astral surf, everything you can possibly imagine, manifest, demanifest, create, destroy, total God's toolbox. And then you have this illusion built on illusion. Run by AI. <laughs> oh, they, they, that's a freaking great circle jerk where they get everyone to input their own information and they tell you what everyone else worked out and then they charge you for it. Yeah. You cannot improve upon this. You cannot have an opinion to approve upon it and no pattern. Listen, this can bore through rock instantaneously and effortlessly. And in the case of Kenneth Bradford shoulders, it left a nice vitrified layer and the beeswax wasn't melted on top, right? So this was non-thermal fluidization of, in that case, al aluminium oxide, which melts at 20, 2,070 degrees centigrade or thereabouts, right? It does the same with silicon dioxide. So this is boring through and making tunnels. Let's say we want to go to Mars. Don't build anything on the surface. You might have to take it there. Let's make loads, loads of fully vitrified tunnels underground and make a city under Earth. We make a tunnel that way, the tunnel's there, we just computer control it from above using this technology, one. The second one is, this is vertical, vertical takeoff and landing. And I told you and I showed you the paper from June the 15th, 2023, where they realized using functional magnetic resonance imaging that during cognitive tasks for a conscious person, right, because oxygenated blood is uh, diamagnetic and deoxygenated blood is paramagnetic, they can observe when they got these people to do cognitive tasks, magnetic vortices and magnetic anti-vortices. Of course, they don't say that that is the minimum required to create a toroidal moment, but it is. And that means you can use this technology to both manipulate humans, read their minds, program them for afar. And in my view, according to Tom Bearden, <laughs> They call it psychotronic weapons, and the DNA is your cryptographic key. So you just need two people in your family stupid enough to give the, the, someone a, a swab. And then they, they, it doesn't matter where you are in the universe, how many miles of rock you're under, they can change and make your thoughts a certain way. And it's sick beyond belief. However, on the bright side, we can connect through the toroidal moment to uh, manifest and control plasmoids. You do it when you join hands in a church and you pray and your intention becomes a thing that goes out to the universe and tries to fix things. Fucking hell, prayer is real. The uh, Global Consciousness Project has something to do with that, doesn't it? So I, I look at thing, things like the, the morphogenic field that people that have enough of their own cryptographic key, because we're not that much different. Like, my wife, she's Vietnamese, but really genetically we're quite close, <laughs> you know. Um, and, and so you only need enough people in enough of the world to understand a subject. And they're constantly uploading to the Akashic record. And what happens, the signal to noise ratio on a particular concept gets higher and higher and higher until it's so high with your cryptographic field, which has a bell curve with which you can pick up that the people are filling in on the bell curve and it's getting closer to your cryptographic access, right? With, basically, it's down to the microtubules have a delocalized electron above and a delocalized electron below. And those are a yin and a yang electron, but they are defined, in my view, by your DNA, okay? So this is why you can learn from your predecessors easier. You do the thing your father does, not because they're teaching you necessarily, because you already know it because it's in your genes. It's in, you have access to their cryptographic key. Right? 
And, and so once enough people have uploaded the information, everyone gets it for free, which is why it's so important to share the information and across as many cultures as possible. And then it will just dump into Can people's brain. See, like cognitive dissonance, dissonance, would you say, in society? Because there's so many fragments of information and no one No, knows no, you have things. television programming, yeah. right? And they are programming your brain. And what happens is that information gets uploaded as accepted truth into the Akashic record. And that forces everyone else to agree. If That's why you have to get an idea out early and to as many people as possible. And then the people that are able to filter out the noise that comes noise. into their brain, noise. it's the noise, and they, they can discern truth from fiction. So you always question anything or anyone's or any, any, anything you see yeah. and, and only believe what you know to be true and is repl replicatable. This, this isn't a fantasy. No. And if you get one of these samples, you will see exactly the same thing. Not slightly the same thing, you will see exactly the same thing. And that's what I like about the Otter experiment. It's a child level experiment and it produces exactly the same thing and it shows you the principles the universe works on in my view. The, the, the and I will just add a caveat, I might be completely wrong. Do not believe anything I say. Do your own homework. When I get home, I'll do this. Yeah. Know it for yourself. All right, so I think Malcolm has arranged to do something. Yeah, we've got a, a presentation that's going to be given by... Uh, it's all right, it won't take long, George. But after this, <laughs> you've had this, and then you're going to have a little cartoon of crayons. <laughs> <laughs> Now you're speaking my love. Well, you used to was my opening act. Say, <laughs> so I'm doing bathroom break for 10. Okay, bathroom break is good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. I'll let you break, say, four, four, ten. Cheers, <laughs> 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 man.